React Native Firebase Analytics connects up our React Native project to Google Analytics, providing us with real-time statistics on who our users are and what they're doing through Firebase. This is really important to be able to understand your audience and how they're using your mobile application. We'll be able to capture things like what time of day they use the application and how long for. We'll be able to see which screens they use and which they don't and we'll be able to see what buttons they click and how often. Capturing all this information means that we'll better understand our application and we'll be able to improve it and make sure that it works optimally for the people and the audience that we're targeting. In this video, we're gonna take a look at setting up the analytics package and start using it. We'll also have a look at how to set up custom events, track which screens are used, and even integrate with React Navigation. We'll jump into the Google console and we'll have a look at how this is tracked. We'll be able to see different events and behaviors in there and see real time statistics of where our users are and what they're doing. I've done a previous video on React Native Firebase and getting it up and running for your React Native project. You'll need to have completed that in order to be able to begin with this one because some of those dependencies are required. I'll link this in the description below and you can check this out at any time. But if you already have React Native Firebase installed and up and running, we can get started immediately. My name's Adrian and I do videos around design and development. So if you do like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe and let's just get started. We'll start by opening up Google and we'll browse React Native Firebase. This will get us to the documentation that we need in case there's any bugs or issues. But we can go straight into analytics now since we've already installed React Native Firebase in our previous video. If we have a look for the installation step here, it's pretty simple. There's only three steps. The first is to make sure that React Native Firebase forward slash app module is installed. But we did this in the previous video and it's already over here. So all we now need to do is install the React Native forward slash analytics package. And we can do this by copying yarn add at React Native Firebase analytics, pasting that into our console and that'll install the package. Now, if you're on iOS, there is one more step, which is browsing into the iOS folder and installing the pods. And that's easy enough to do. We'll just CD iOS and run pod install, and that'll get us all up and running for iOS environments. Once we're done, we can just browse out of that by running CD dot dot, and we can get started using the analytics tools now. So the first thing that Google Analytics provides is real time tracking of different users using your application. But there are other things we can implement as well. The two main ones being events and user properties. Events will be essentially tracking when certain things happen in your application, such as if someone's clicked on a certain navigation item or a button or submitted a form. And user properties are more about your user in general, such as where they're located or what language they have set. Let's browse down here and have a look at setting our first custom event. Now we're going to import the package from React Native Analytics and we're going to run it on a button here. And what we want to do is track when a user selects this button. We're going to jump into our React Native Firebase uh, console later and have a look to make sure this is coming up. Now that we've installed the package, we'll have to rerun npx react-native run-android to make sure that our package is in there. And while it's running in the background, we'll jump into our project over here. And it's a pretty simple project. There's nothing really here yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a button. So I'm going to import this over here. We'll import button from React Native and create it down here. Now we've got a example button here where I'm just going to copy this over and we'll be able to use this. We'll paste it in straight below welcome to React Native. And in here, I'll just say add tracking event as the title. And this will call the analytics package. Now we haven't imported that yet. So let's import analytics from React Native Firebase. We'll paste it up here below the Firebase import. And now we can call this function. And in here, we can create some information. So for this, I just wanna call a generic event and this won't have an ID. It'll just have something very specific such as uh, it worked with no description and no size. 
I think that's good enough to get us started and we can save that and give it a test on our application. So what we're going to do is select this button over here and this will create a log of our event. Each time we select it, it's going to pass that log into the analytics and we'll be able to see that by jumping into the Google console for Firebase. So let's go Firebase console in Google and we'll jump into console.firebase.google.com and select our project, which is React Native Firebase that we created last time. In here, we'll have all the information for our Firebase analytics and we can select the dashboard here on the left. It's got a little bit more information about what's going on in our application. We'll have things like events, conversions, and even crashes. In this case, we want some more refined statistics and we'll be able to view those by selecting view your data in Google Analytics. When we select this, we'll have a nice real-time map of what's going on in our application. In this case, we can go to the real-time statistics over here. And this will actually show that the application is running here locally in Western Australia on my virtual simulated device, which is pretty cool. And we we'll even get those general events being logged out as an event over here. And I've actually sit, selected it three times and it's logged each one of those. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you're doing analytics, you can have other events as well. There's custom events, which is what we just selected, but there's also predefined events. And these are events that you can use through Google Analytics uh, with their default settings, such as setting a user ID, creating a log search, or even completing an e-commerce purchase. This allows you to have more specific events happening depending on what your use case is. But in this case, we're just going to keep it simple and use this custom event. The analytics also provides us with some other information, such as what devices they're using, uh, how they're using the application, and if the application crashes. And if we don't want to have a look at the real-time statistics, all of that information is here on the left too, which is very useful. Another thing that can be very useful is being able to set the current screen you're on. This can be used with the analytics function called set current screen. And if you're using React navigation, this makes things even easier. You could define a navigation container where you can run this function to set it automatically. But in our case, we're going to set it manually so that you guys can see how it works. Right now, we don't have any screens, but we do have a component. So we could do a component did mount or a component will mount. And with this, we can put in a function here. We can call our analytics package and we can run that command for the set the current screen. And this is it over here. In here, we can set the screen to home and we could set a custom subscreen as well. But in this case, we don't have one. So we'll just set this to home as well. We can save this and when we relaunch our application, that'll automatically set every time the screen is loaded. If we have additional screens, we could get them to mount and set the current screen over here too. If we jump into our analytics, we could go to behaviors. And on this screen, when we scroll down, we'll be able to see some more details. So in this case, the home screen here is being applied on our component and we can see how many people are accessing that screen. So it's a very useful way to be able to get some more information about how your users are using your application and what exactly they're doing on there, which is really cool. Another really useful thing with analytics is the ability to set a user ID against the tracking that you're doing. And this gives you a bit more refinement around who's doing what on your analytics. This is pretty simple. You just run set user ID with a string and we can do this in our application over here. We'll run analytics and we'll run set user ID and pass a string. So if you're using something like MongoDB, this could be your object ID. Or if you're using something like MySQL, SQL in general, this could even just be the row or the user ID that it's currently on. But this isn't very clear because it's just some basic information. And if we want some more information, we can actually set some user profile um, properties. So here we can set user properties and we pass in a key here and a string that goes along for that property. So let's give that a test. We'll pass in analytics here and we'll set a user property. 
And in here, we'll pass an object. And this object will essentially have one thing, which is a key and a string here. And this will define what we're providing. So let's copy over this syntax. We'll paste it in here. For the key, we might call this username. And over here for the string, we might pass this as Adrian. This way, the next time that the application is being set and viewed in a Google Analytics console, we'll be able to see that the username Adrian with the user ID of eight is visiting the home screen, which is very useful, especially if someone's having bugs in their application and you want to identify what processes they've gone through to cause that bug to happen. Then we can jump into our Google Analytics tool and we can create a filter on the dashboard here. And we can filter against lots of things such as iOS or Android versions, uh, user properties such as the user ID. But in this case, we're going to filter against the username that we set. And we can filter it straight away by a variable that we might want to put in. And this way we can capture exactly the audience that we want and have a look at what they're doing on the application. We can also jump into the Google Analytics tool and create the same sort of filters in there too. They're all available at the top of any panel where you add a comparison and you select what you want to filter against. In this case, we might want to filter against the signed in user ID and we can pass that straight in. I hope this video gave you a good understanding of how to get started with React Native Firebase for your React Native application. Obviously, there's a lot more to it, but this is the baseline and it should get you up and running. You can really define custom events however you want so that they're more catered to your application and how it functions. In the next video, we'll take a look at implementing React Native Firebase with authentication. There's cool services in there, such as authenticating with Google Sign-In or maybe even Twitter. And if you don't want those, you can even sign in with just a username, such as an email address and a password. I hope you like this content. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.